Hi again, my name is Amod and I am the founder of Consonance Acoustics, an acoustical design company and products company. In this video, we will talk about NRC, what it is, what are the benefits or the lack of benefits this measure offers. As a quick introduction, we at Consonance Acoustics have been researching a lot on sound absorbers. We have even patented an absorber. If you are facing troubles selecting sound absorbers, for your auditorium acoustics, you can reach us at the number mentioned in the description. Noise reduction coefficient or NRC is defined as the average of the absorption coefficients at 250Hz, 500Hz, 1000Hz and 2000Hz octave bands. Octave bands of 125Hz and below and 4000Hz and above are ignored in this calculation. Let's address what absorption coefficient is and what octave bands are so that you know what all this is. Um, let's understand how sound works. We know that sound travels in a medium. Learned that in school, yeah? Sound waves travel by moving the air particle. So let's say one particle moves or vibrates, causing subsequent particles to move and vibrate. There is always some energy loss as this vibration moves forward. When these particles meet another surface, which is a different medium, there will be some interaction. For the sake of simplicity, let's assume that a perfectly rigid medium comes in the pathway of sound waves. The, the sound waves or the vibrating air particles will hit the rigid surface and bounce back. This is how sound is reflected. Since surfaces are not perfectly rigid, the interaction looks slightly different. The incident energy gets transmitted, absorbed and reflected. That means the moving air particles will influence the surface particles. The hitting particles will push some particles off the surface. Those particles will then similarly influence adjacent particles. Some will move inside the surface and lose their energy while some will influence particles beyond the surface and this energy will get transmitted. Some particles will bounce back, but now with reduced energy. The ratio of the difference between the incident energy and the reduced reflected energy by the incident energy is the absorption coefficient of sound. If the difference between the incident energy and the reflected energy is zero, the sound is completely reflected and the absorption coefficient is zero. If the difference between the incident energy and the reflected energy equals the incident energy, the sound wave was entirely absorbed and the absorption coefficient is 1. As an easier way to understand this maybe is through tennis courts. Let's talk about tennis for a while. The great Rafael Nadal is considered the king of clay courts. The great Pete Sampras has never won the French Open, I think, not an expert on that. They are both great players, but their play styles are very different. Clay courts are the slowest courts. The ball loses its speed after bouncing, while on the grass courts, the ball does not lose its speed as much. It does not spin as much. And obviously, hard courts are the fast fastest. Similarly, air reflects differently on different surfaces. An even better example is in the game of cricket. We played cricket with uh, rubber ball, cork ball, leather balls. Have you tried balling a leather ball on a grass pitch? It will just not bounce at all. To bounce it properly, it needs a hard surface. But the rubber balls will bounce even on a pitch of grass. Their coefficients of bouncing, so to speak, are different. Imagine that you had to play a professional cricket match, but the curator said we will have the pitch and the ground covered with grass. That game cannot be played with a leather ball. You need a different surface for the pitch so that the leather ball can bounce. Similarly, you cannot have a material that only absorbs high frequencies and does nothing to the low frequencies in the context of auditorium acoustics. To understand why there has to be a balance in the absorption, Click on the i button to watch the video about how to improve speech clarity in an auditorium. I do not know the motivation for introducing NRC as a measure. I did not care to find out who introduced it. 
Another issue I have with it is the name which is quite misleading. Whereas it is a measure of uh, sound absorption in a space, it does not guarantee that noise will be reduced. It is unnecessarily misleading and people end up designing incorrect acoustics for their auditoriums or spaces. Now that you know what NRC is, you can put it to better use to deal with the material suppliers and ask for a frequency distribution of the absorption coefficients. As an architect or a designer, you are no longer at the mercy of material suppliers. You can now decide on which materials to use while designing auditorium acoustics. If this video has helped you, please press the like button, comment your questions below and subscribe to our channel to be updated about such videos. And don't forget to share this video with your network so that it could help them as well. Thanks for watching and bye bye.